these 16 years that I have been making these masks, I have never used models except in the very beginning. As uh, I wanted to create types, however imaginative they may be, rather than portray definite personalities. Now, Romola, let's bring to life some of these masks. So we shall begin with the demure young girl. And this one, not so demure. Here is a piano mover. Here is the golden goddess of vanity. Snodgrass from Dickens Pickwick Papers. I wonder what is the gossip here. I think I'd better break it up. Why don't you take the mask off? And you too, young lady. You want? All right, and I'll do it for you. When the sunshine heralds spring over the snow-capped mountains, it's carnival time in Switzerland too. In all the villages, they put on their masks and make whoopee. Don't ask me why, it's just an old Swiss custom. But arms aren't everything. Some faces are interesting too, especially when they're covered. And here are some of the masks featured in Mr. Duncan Melvin's entertaining television series, a collection worth about 2,000 pounds. The first is a Singalese mask. And these two, Japanese, showing fat-cheeked laughing females, their features typically oriental and unadorned. The Tibetan devil mask was a very ornate affair, worn by the Lama priests in the temples and seen by few strangers. This African mask had a movable jaw that could be worked by the witch doctors to impress their rather guileless panel patients. The Dahomey mask had a striped futurist appearance and was a remarkably skillful piece of workmanship. This is the only example of an African idol mask in the form of a man. And there's a Benin mask of bronze. This particular kind of head covering was one of the most advanced forms of culture in Africa, and specimens are extremely rare. This mask comes from New Guinea, and was used at the initiation of young men to secret societies. It's thought to bear some resemblance to a crocodile. Also from the South Seas is this other Adonis. He's made of cane, covered with mulberry bark cloth. The dancing masks of Java, though not exactly handsome, were certainly marvellous examples of native art. Nor were the Singalese anxious to err on the side of beauty, although the actual workmanship in these examples is of a very high standard. You wouldn't doubt that these were devil, in fact the very devil masks, to frighten away evil spirits. They must have been pretty successful. This Indian mask is about 2,000 years old, and for 200 years it lay at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> 